Hey fellow tennis nerds, welcome to a mixed bag. We've had a great week of tennis, uh, Basel and Vienna. We had Medvedev winning in Vienna. We had Auger Alassim winning his third title in a row. Spectacular performance, just playing his best tennis ever. A lot of good pure arrow results, pure arrow VS that is. Auger Alassim playing with an older version, but still a 98 screen inch, 1620 arrow. Same for Rune and Alcaraz. So it's been good for Babolat. I'm sure they're seeing some, some excellent sales. And that model is supposed to be updated in January to the Pure Arrow 98. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Uh, we also have new rackets uh, being announced by Dunlop. The FX line, an update to the power line by Dunlop. As you know, power in most cases is blue. Look at the Pure Drive, look at the Instinct, look at the Ultra. Blue is the power color, meaning you get more free depth from your shots, a little bit denser patterns overall on these FX compared to the more aerodynamic, bit more launch angle SX line. They're both powerful, but the FX has a bit more punch on the ball and a little bit denser pattern for you flatter hitters. I really enjoyed the previous FX, thought it was a bit stiff. Uh, check out my review for, for more info about that. So I hope this one is a tiny bit softer, still keeps that the good things that were in the previous version, which was a pretty dense string pattern good pop, easy swinging experience, just a very nice racket, uh, possible to platform it as well. So that racket to come. I've gotten questions about other updates as well. There should be a Yonex V-Core line update. I don't know for sure exactly when, I would guess around December. And that's, I think, where the previous generation of these rackets came. And as you might have seen, Denis Shapovalov is playing a blacked out racket, which is allegedly uh, the new V-Core 95. And he seems to be back to his confident ways of playing tennis. For a while, he was with the ESO 98, then he was with the V-Core 95, an older generation, then back and forth a bit. And now he seems to have found some kind of confidence. And rackets are very very mental it's not what the racket does to your game it's how you feel playing with the racket and when you are doubting rackets and playing around with five six different rackets as i do in my testing life i don't have enough discipline sadly to just stick to one and then just do a testing period and go back to one i get kind of like really into a racket and i want to keep playing with it because i thought i would play well over this period i was testing it I need to have a much stronger regime for testing so I can use a certain racket for tournaments because I notice when I just decide on playing with one racket no matter what I play better and I've seen that I'm playing a lot of practice matches playing ITF Masters playing my third one tomorrow actually uh, at the time of uh, uploading this and I hope I can do a decent job but obviously I've been playing around with lots of different rackets which is not to be recommended don't do as I do do as I say Sometimes two different rackets can be good if you want more power or at least different string tensions or string setups if you have several of one, but don't mix it too much. You need to get your muscle memory and the confidence in the racket needs to be there. Then you can play your best tennis. So Chapo seems to have found that. There's no doubts in racket choice from Rune, who's playing amazingly well as well. Aliasim or Alcaraz, for example. Neither Medvedev seems to have any issues with his 95 screen inch Technifiber T fight, uh, an older version of T fight with 1819 pattern. And talking about 1819 pattern, we have three players now that I know of that are playing with 1819. And there was Djokovic, who changed his string pattern from 1820. Daniel Medvedev was playing 1820 in his junior days. When he moved to Technifiber, he went to 1819. Gives you a bit more lift on the ball, tiny bit more forgiveness. A small, small uh, difference, but still there. And now we also see Sebastian Korda with his Pro Stock Blade 98. It's blacked out. I get a lot of questions. What's up with this frame? Judging by the pictures, which is all the information I have, it's the same mold as the previous racket. I think he uses a, a K-Blade 98, like Sitsipas, for example, but it could also be another generation blade. A lot of the blades are similar. The encode blade, it was quite flexible, but then they stiffened up the blades a bit. The K-Factor, probably the stiffest blade. And nowadays, the blades are pretty soft in feel. They're around 60 in stiffness. Um, I'm playing around with a 2015 blade that I like, which is around mid-60 stiffness. So there are differences. But overall, the output on your shots is blade style, which is controlled. Uh, but with a bit more pop than a prestige. So Sebastian Corda still with a blade 98, but now with 1819 pattern. So we're seeing this, I would say, in between patterns now, which 1620, Alcaraz Rune, Aliasim, 
and 18-19 Djokovic, Medvedev, Korda, for example. And uh, I think that's a trend we might see more. 18-20 sometimes don't give you enough lift on the ball. And uh, even in like, no matter if you play 95 or 98 square inches, sometimes the 18-19 is a good approach because 60-19 might be a bit too open. The ball um, shoots out a bit more, more launch angle, a little bit more movement in the string bed. And 18-20 get too much of a narrow launch. So the ball, you know, hits the net more and you have a harder time generating spin on the ball. So seems like 18-19, 16-20. Could be the way to go. For my own reviews, I will soon publish my review of the Fury Arma Pro 98. The New York-based brand. Uh, it's a racket I really enjoyed when I've been hitting with it. So the review should be up soon. Have you been watching any tennis? There's not many tournaments left. We have Rafa back in action. I think that's great. I mean, Rafa had a baby boy, uh, also called Rafa. And uh, now he's playing tennis again. I mean, he obviously he wants to play tennis. I think his sight mainly is set on the ATP finals. So he's using Paris now, Paris Masters as kind of a warm-up and hopefully he can get into the groove and win the trophy that has eluded him for quite a while. He has not won the ATP Finals, so uh, in his illustrious career, as you know, and I think it would make, uh, I would think it would mean a lot to him if he could manage to win it. But obviously, hard courts indoor end of season has not always been his friend. Now he seems pretty fresh, so maybe he can be a threat. But then you have Medvedev, Djokovic, they love this kind of surface, and also Ali Asim, who's playing amazing tennis at the moment indoors on hard courts. So I do find it difficult. Me and Dennis Timar, uh, we do a weekly podcast. I mean, on the Tennis Nerd podcast, I talk to different guests, but I have a weekly one where I talk to Dennis Timar, who's a big tennis enthusiast, loves talking about strings, gear, and everything tennis. But he also follows the tour really closely. So we have an interesting conversation every week about what's happening on the tours, anything about gear and about different things in tennis. So make sure to listen to that one on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you find your podcasts. And we discussed the draw of the Paris Masters, our predictions for the event. We were very happy about our Basel and Vienna predictions, which were almost spot on. And we're discussing the end of the year, both for the WTA and the ATP. And this is something we will keep on doing for next year. So please make sure to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcasting platform. Lots of content to come. I have some interesting bags to pop in. I have some racket reviews that you requested. Uh, so please make sure to subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot. And if you are very confused about rackets, you want to know more, you want to understand what rackets you should play with, then you should check out my Road to the Right Racket the online course. The link is in the description. That is all for this mixed bag. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day. And don't forget to play some tennis.